Hi, it's Lori, and I work as a psychic medium. We're all psychic, we're all medium, we're all empathic. We all have instincts and abilities to figure things out with our intuition or our senses. And um, it's just about believing that we can all do it. It's the first part to really being able to capture our own messages or build our energy. And uh, so today I wanted to talk about auras and energy, our, our color energy and our personal energy, where our auras are. So I did a little notes on the side, so I'm going to look over here. You know, our personal space is our energy field around us, which is our physics space, our heat, our movement that's outside of our bodies that can affect each other. You know how we say, oh, you're in my personal space or my space bubble. It's because our energy is outside of our body too, and that's where we can start to sense pressure, okay? And within this personal space, we can have an extra shine, an extra glow to us, an extra sense of health or perception. If we build this area strong and colorful, despite all the stress, so we have to heal from stress as much as we can, we can increase our psychic and mediumship abilities and our empathic abilities. And we can start reading people better and predicting better and understanding what happened in our world better. Instead of being more surprised and shocked, we can start to figure neat things out, you know, like, oh, I get this. I get my dog. I get my horse. I, I understand this person. I haven't seen for a while, but I, I understand what they're talking about right away because my perceptions are up. Even when they maybe not made so much sense or they didn't get all the words out, you know, when we were talking. Our personal space can take on its own beauty, too. There's something about this person that shines. Well, we've heard that, I, th I think I, many of us have, that in India they study auras and they can see them. Asia, sometimes they study them. I know a lot of Arabic countries do. Well, we can all, we're all human, so we can all have the ability to sense or see auras. Maybe we just have to buy our friends something green. I swear, you just look the best in green. More than likely, they're shining a little green, but we don't know that. We just sense it. We may not see it, but we sense it, and then we pick it up. And other times, we just say, my favorite color is yellow. I just love yellow, especially these days. I want some yellow around me. Or you hear people who want red, like they hit a change in life, and I just need some, I need a red car. I need some red clothes. I feel bold. So there's... There's messages and meaning to the colors that are around our earth or in our rainbows or in our skies. And when we bring them into our life, they can help us find nature and peace and harmony. They can help us find adventure with deep sea blue, healing of a sky blue day, yellow that can bring up sunshine and bright ideas, pink, sensitivity, puzzle solving, they can go uh, rose, which is a pink puzzle solver and a predictive nature, which is great for all sorts of things, weather predictions, um, guessing what's going to happen next in a relationship or a career. So we can think about colors as a tool for us to grow into and our personal space as a place to heal. Okay, so if we have a full personal space in a big personal space we can have lots of colors and lots of abilities to heal and uh, heal others heal ourselves and bring out our natural artistic talents our natural talents to remember history or think astronomically you know we have all sorts of abilities as human beings you know when we take the time to say I can do this even a little bit even a little bit now because our world is so stressful, our personal space can change, okay? Our energy can change due to stress or trauma. So if we have a lot of stress instead of our personal space bubble being out here, it can be flat. And maybe people bump into us 
or we're drawn to energy really quick, all of a sudden we're falling in towards people. Or maybe our energy is just right about here and we still feel a little cramped around people, maybe a little nervous, okay, a little nervous, like you're too close, you're too close, or it's really big and we start to sense them before they come to us. Oh, I want that person close, or I don't, I don't, okay, that's kind of a nice personal space for Earth, you know. What are we sensing? I've got a lot of room in my personal space. If we are broken, say we have too much adrenal reaction from stress, maybe we have financial stress and abuse around us, or we have verbal abuse, or even some physical abuse, we can crack open our personal space. And maybe we feel okay, but certain areas we're very sensitive. And that can affect even certain areas of our body or give us certain headaches here and there because we don't have an energy field here. So we need to think about that. How am I feeling when I go out in, in public or to the store? Am I sensitive to certain places? Am I, are my eyes sensitive over here? Why? Because I'm not dealing with my adrenal reaction and my stress. So I would say go online and Google how to heal adrenals. What to eat? You know, we should eat probably more vegetarian, vegan, longevity foods, maybe aquaculture, and say, this is better for the planet and better for my body because it's easier to digest and I will feel better and my energy will recover. Lots of water, maybe citrus can work in there. So you say, what can I heal to, to do, do better in my energy and have more drive and feel secure? And if I'm not getting it by myself in one week or less, then I, I need help. I need help right away. So I either need to go to a counselor, I need to go to a doctor, I need to go to a massage, I need to go to some friends. I can't let myself get down. So let's say instead of a week, let's say a couple of days, and then we start asking for help. Because it's really hard to let ourselves go. If we get in this cycle of adrenal control, we can say, well, I'll get to it or I'll figure it out. I have a plan for a month from now instead of getting the help we need. And then when we finally feel better, we should have done it years ago. Okay, so ask for more help. We've got a lot of beautiful help around. Or even going to the internet and getting free help, you know, wherever we can. So then there's broken energy that's actually split. And maybe we don't even feel like ourselves. We're really floaty. We don't remember things. This is from trauma. Maybe we have some different odd behaviors or compulsions. This is definitely trauma, usually childhood trauma. And that can be extreme and in the cycle of abuse. Sometimes people can overcome that, but if they go back into something traumatic and something else hits them, they can break apart again. A lot of times people who go into the military have had traumatic childhoods of some type. And then they go into the military and they're asked and trained to do horrific things to try to protect us from horrific people that are so traumatized too because of the abuse cycle here, there, or everywhere. And they can stay split or split again. We can all heal. It's just a matter of taking the time to heal and getting the help we need. And it's a serious task for people who are split energy to heal, but they can. And when people are split in their energy, they and if they don't heal and they have violence from their split, that's the trauma, and they've actually been violent, they're dangerous people. They're dangerous people on our planet, and there are many like that. And they're in the cycle of the abuse, and they can easily perpetuate the cycle of abuse. So it's really good to understand energy. Usually they don't have auras, but they can still if they believe in heaven or spirit world and they do do take care of something say they love an animal or they still love something they can have aura colors otherwise they're pretty flat they don't shine aura okay so they'll be kind of a flat energy they can have erratic behavior or movements or very forward trained movements very forward trained talk not a big thinker, very linear, and then changing and not remembering. It, it's real important to start learning about people so that we're all safer and then we can help them, direct them, or we pull away sooner from our relationships so that we can recharge and get 
to the happiest life possible on earth and the most colorful life possible on earth. So what is your favorite color? And then how do we see other aura colors? Why is this my favorite color? Mine's green. I love to be outside and I love wildlife. So green, green, green for me, okay? But then I say, well, how can I start to see colors again? Maybe I'll squint when I'm relaxing, look at the wall and see if I can pick up yellow. That one's a pretty easy color to pick up. But other people can pick up maybe purple or red right away. So I'll look towards the heat of the ground, maybe off of pavement, and see if I can see heat rising, the ripples. That's energy, heat energy. So maybe I can see some color in that. I'll watch for dawn and dusk and stormy skies, see different colors. I'll try to see heat off my hand. Can I see any energy floating above? Can I feel energy? You know, can I sense energy here or there? Can I sense energy in my room then? If I can feel it off my two hands, heat energy, or my personal space energy, which is heat energy and circulation, all the stuff going on, uh, friction, oh, you know, picking up different things from our air. Can I feel it between my hands? Can I feel it outside here? What else is in my room? And can I squint and see it? Why did I pick up this color, you know, pink? Do I need to be more psychic? Do I need to be more puzzle solving today? So maybe I do, maybe I'll choose that and have a lot more fun with my colors. So think that we are all psychic, we're all medium, we're all empathic, you are too. Just believing it will get your energy start to come together in a translucence and you might be able to see it better and then build from there and see what you come up with. Colors are healing. They're a healing part of our planet. When we have passions for things, love for things, we want to care and nurture, we are becoming more in our nature as a soul to heal ourselves and heal others and maneuver through our very difficult life on earth with more joy and happiness and much more safety. If we can't do that, then ask for help. Because, and we can need help, whether we are poor, we are single, married, with kids, family around, we can be wealthy and need help, and we can be held hostage, you know, by economy. So we can be wealthy and be hostage by economy or poor and be hostage by economy, whether you're in a marriage and too afraid to break up or you are just not allowed to go anywhere because money controls you and you're not allowed to leave. There's all sorts of scenarios on our planet that are unnecessary for spirit, for life, for sustaining human life. Um, but we have them and we need to maneuver around them. And if we did have a harmonious planet, hopefully in the future, we would all see colors. If there were no economy, we all have plenty of resources on Earth. There's plenty now. We have the technology. We have all sorts of great things that we can do. We could all see color. We could all sense color. And we'd all know we are psychic. It would just be how we are raised and how we'd sense things right away as little kids. And I know we can get it back. So that's my message. I study this through mediumship. I ask questions. I get answers. I go yes, no. Maybe for you, like for me, my first yes was yes, up. No was kind of clamped, you know, no, yes, no, yes. Some people use pendulums. Um, that's a start to try to get a feeling. Maybe no will just mean this. You know, everyone has a little different. Um, start to ask questions and try to get more stories. And just whatever you get. Don't worry about being right or wrong. Just play with it. The more you play with it, the more you'll shine in your aura, in your energy, and the more perception will start to build. Okay? Thank you for listening and have a great day.